Hi everyone, I'm Miranda and welcome to my YouTube channel. Happy Burns Night to all of my Scottish followers and everyone who is celebrating Burns Night this evening. I hope you're having a lovely time and I thought I would get into the spirit of the thing today and share some of my favourite Scottish literature with you all. So today I'm going to be talking about books that are both set in Scotland and also books by favourite Scottish writers of mine. So I've got a lot to get through, let's get started. First of all I have to mention one of my favourite Scottish writers, John Buchan, and his book The 39 Steps. This is such an exciting story and indeed it's said that John Buchan invented the modern spy thriller with this book. It was first published in 1915, it's about a young man called Robert Hannay and he comes home one evening and discovers the body of a dead man in his flat. This man had just tried to warn Robert of a plot that would bring Britain to the brink of war days before he has now been found dead. Now of course Robert is suspected of the crime and he has to flee. He flees to the Scottish Highland where he has to fend for his own life and also try to get a message to the British government. It's all very exciting and I highly recommend it. Now John Buchan also had a literary sister called Anna Buchan but she wrote under the pen name of O'Douglas. I have one of her books here. I love these vintage classics, they're very cosy, gentle reads. Most of her books are set in Scotland, including this one, which is called Pink Sugar. It's a lovely book to read in the springtime. It starts with the heroine arranging a bowl of daffodils, and I, re I first read it during the spring, and it really matched my mood at that time. So I definitely recommend putting this one on your list as a spring read if you can find a secondhand copy. It's really a charming story, it's a gentle romance, but it's about a 30 year old woman who is enjoying her independence for the first time. She had a rather sickly mother who has now passed away and she's deciding what she wants out of life and she thinks that she's embracing the character of a spinster. And she happens to have some sort of friends of friends children descend on her in her new lovely little cottage. So it's not quite the tranquil solitude she'd maybe envisaged, but she ends up loving having these young people around the home. And like I said, there's also a romance that ends up happening and it's just a very sweet story. So one I would recommend. Then if you like O'Douglas, another brilliant Scottish writer in a similar vein is D.E. Stevenson. I love her books again, they're really quintessential cosy reads and she wrote two series of mine that are particular favourites and one is the Miss Bunkle series and the first is Miss Bunkle's book and this is about a woman who starts to write about the inhabitants of her village <laughs> and her book gets published and becomes a success but uh, the inhabitants actually recognise themselves in this book and it all starts to get rather tense. So it's a very funny story, again there's actually a bit of romance in this and it's just a really charming one. The other series I mentioned that's a favourite of mine are the Mrs Tim books by D.E. Stevenson. They're really charming stories about a young army officer's wife and all of her sort of adventures and friendships and those are really charming too. But I also recommend Miss Bunkle's book which has also been republished by Persephone Books too. And then this book is a real Scottish classic. It's Consider the Lilies by Ian Crichton Smith. I read this a few years ago and I so enjoyed it. It's about the Highland clearances, which previously to reading this book, I didn't know a lot about. This is a really moving story 
of that horrendous time in history. It's about an elderly woman who has just learnt that she is going to be forced to leave her home. And as she considers what on earth she's going to do, she reflects back on her life and how she first came to live in this croft and about her husband and son and it's just a very moving story and I really recommend it. This edition I love, it came out as the 50th anniversary edition of this book and I think it's really beautiful. Then of course I have to mention Alexander McCall Smith who is one of my favourite living Scottish writers and he has two series that I really enjoy that are set in Scotland. Um, one of those series is the Isabel Dalhousie. I, I think, I hope that's how you say her name, I'm not sure. Um, this is the first in the series, the Sunday Philosophy Club, which I love. And then this is one from the 44 Scotland Street books. And I had to mention this one because it's such a perfect title, A uh, Time of Love and Tartan. I love the four, uh, I love the 44 Scotland Street series. They follow lots of different eccentric, some more charming than others, um, characters that live on this road in Scotland. And you follow along their lives and loves and interests and ups and downs. And I think he just writes so well about people. And he writes with such compassion and humour that I really love that about Alexander McCoy. Paul Smith's writing. He really draws you into his world and to the lives of these characters that he creates. And I especially see that in the 44 Scotland Street series. And yeah, I really love the series. So those two I had to mention. Then Mary Stewart, if you've been following my channel for a while, then you know that I love the writer Mary Stewart. She wrote a lot of sort of adventure slash gentle romance novels uh, all featuring sort of young women and I really enjoyed these books. I first started reading them as a teenager and then in my early 20s and I've been rereading some of them lately too and they're just so much fun. A lot of her heroines are uh, really gutsy and I really enjoy her hero heroines but these two of hers are set in Scotland and the Isle of Skye. This one Stormy Petrel and then Wildfire at Midnight and I think that they would make really great reads if you're in the mood for a light read and but a book that celebrates Scotland then I think these would be really good choices. And then this is a real favourite of mine and my mum loves it too. If you watch Tea Reads on Friday, then you would have seen her reading a little section from this book, which is Lady Rose and Mrs Memory by Ruby Ferguson. This book has been described as a real love letter to Scotland and there's a fairy tale like quality to it that I think lends to that romantic notion of Scotland that so many of us have. And it's a really charming story. It's a story about love, about a house, about constraints on women. Most of the book is set during the Victorian times. And yeah, it just is a really charming book. I really recommend it. Again, it makes a lovely cosy read and it's definitely a great book for a Scottish a Scottish setting as well. I do recommend it. And then of course another famous Scottish writer is Muriel Spark and the Prime of Miss Jean Brodie is I think her most famous novel um, set in Edinburgh about a rather strange teacher. But I also wanted to really highlight her short stories, which I really enjoy actually. They're really uh, well done. She was such a good short story writer. 
and I have her complete short story collection and if you're a fan of her novels but maybe you haven't tried her short stories I would really recommend giving them a read because she is just such an original, quirky kind of writer and that really comes out in the short stories too. Um, they're quite an eclectic mix and I really enjoy them for that. There's very much her distinctive sort of writing style in them still. And then another of my favourites of hers is The Driver's Seat. Now this is certainly not a cosy read <laughs> at all. Muriel Spark was not a cosy kind of writer, but it's absolutely gripping. And it's one of those books that I just couldn't put down. I wanted to find out what was going to happen next, what was really going on in the mind of this rather mad narrator. And it's just a really exciting, disturbing, strange book in many ways, but her writing, I mean, no sentence, no word is wasted in her prose. That's something I really like about Muriel Sparks' writing. And this is certainly one that I'll always remember and is definitely worth a read. And then I absolutely love September by Rosamond Pilcher. Rosamond Pilcher lived a good deal in Scotland and clearly loved it. And Winter Solstice, which you may have read along with us for the book club, a lot of that is set in Scotland, which is a wonderful read. And then September by Rosamond Pilcher is also set a lot in Scotland. And it's all about the build up to a special 21st birthday party when there's going to be a big sort of Scottish ball with a proper reel and all of that. So I really enjoyed this one as well and if you've read The Shell Seekers and this is quite a good follow-up book to read um, because one of the characters from The Shell Seekers appears in this one too. Yeah that's a lovely book as well. And then two more in this stack, there is more to come. <laughs> Nancy Mitford's, I think this is her first novel actually, Highland Fling, um, and part of this is set in Scotland as well. I don't think it's one of her best books, but it still is sort of worth a read, although if you're new to Nancy Mitford then I really do recommend with starting with The Pursuit of Love and Love in a Cold Climate because I really believe those are her best books. But there still is her sort of signature wit in this and it's one that I would like to read again myself soon because I'd like to go through and read her books in chronological order at some point because I've never done that with her work and I do generally consider her earlier work weaker obviously as is the case for many writers but it still is definitely still worth reading. And then this is a favourite book of mine Gillespie and I by Jane Harris. This book is set in the Victorian era and it's set in Glasgow and it features one of the best unreliable narrators that I've come across in literature. If you watched my video on my favourite unreliable narrators in books then you'll know I have already mentioned this book in that video. But yes, I really loved it. I would really recommend this. It's hard to put this book down. There's a brilliant twist to the tale that even though you might know that something isn't quite right, it's hard to see this twist coming, I think. And it's just very well done. And you really change your mind about the characters as you read the book and about what's really going on in the story. So yeah, it's a really engrossing, gripping read. I recommend it. And I'm back with my replenished stacks. So I wanted to share some mysteries with you. The first is Five Red Herrings by Dorothy L. Sayers. It's one of the Lord Peter Whimsey books and this mystery is set in Scotland which I really enjoyed. 
It's about a group of artists and one of the artists dies in mysterious circumstances. Was it an accident or was he murdered? Lord Peter isn't sure but he wants to find out and all of the other members of this artist group definitely had a reason for wishing this artist dead. Now five of those artists are red herrings but is number six the murderer <laughs> and that's what Lord Peter Whimsy discovers in this book. It's a fun one, I love the Lord Wh Peter Whimsy books so I enjoyed this and I love the Scottish setting. Then another great golden age mystery set in Scotland is The Singing Sands by Josephine Tay and this is one of her Inspector Grant books. Inspector Grant is on his way to Scotland in need of a, in, in need of a rescue and he's travelling by train. Well of course a man dies on the train. It seems that his death isn't suspicious but Inspector Grant becomes intrigued by these lines of verse that the man scrawled on paper just before dying and he starts to investigate the, the circumstances surrounding this man and his death and this investigation takes him to the Outer Hebrides and it's a very atmospheric read, one I really enjoyed. Then a more modern mystery, also set in Scotland, is The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. This is set in the run-up to New Year's Eve and New Year's Eve itself. And it's about a group of university friends who get together and celebrate every New Year's. However, this year tensions are really running high between the group. And of course, there is a murder. Now, I enjoy the, the way that Lucy Foley flips the structure of the sort of classic murder mystery in her books. Because what she does is... The murder, in fact, doesn't take place until the very end of the novel. And by the time you get to that point, you as the reader know who is going to be murdered and also who the murderer is by that stage, which I think is quite a clever twist. And like I said, this one, it's a good Scottish mystery. It's a good winter read as well because they become snowbound, this group of friends. And... Um, cut off from everyone so it's one of those great snowy wintry mysteries too and I have one more mystery here which is After the Armistice Ball by Catriona McPherson, a Scottish writer. This is a modern book, but it's written in the style of a Golden Age mystery. It's set just after World War I, and the heroine, Dandy Gilver, is kicking her heels at home a bit, feeling rather bored. Thankfully, her husband has returned safely from the war, but she's wondering what to do with herself. And she starts to investigate some local jewellery thefts, but then a murder happens, so things take a much more sinister turn. Now, I read a lot of these books when I, when I was in my early 20s, and then I sort of stopped reading the series. I can't really remember why, I think maybe I felt they all got a bit samey, but I'd quite like to return to them now and see what I think. Um, at this stage in my life and maybe read a few more. I don't know, but I picked this one up again quite recently because I didn't have my old copy anymore and I'm quite keen to read it again, see what I think. And then I want to talk about some Scottish children's books. So I love the writer Dorita Farley Bruce. Uh, she was a Scottish writer. She wrote a lot of boarding school stories for girls set in the interwar years. She wrote the Dimsey books and the Nancy books, for instance, that I really liked reading when I was little. This isn't one of her school stories and it's for slightly older children, but I really loved reading this when I was a teenager. It's called The Bartle Bequest and it's about a young woman called Primula who hires a housekeeper and the two get on really well. They end up moving from Edinburgh to a little coastal town in Scotland and um, Primula becomes the curator of a new museum there. 
but things start to go wrong. Um, there are some thefts and some forgeries that are discovered at the museum and the two girls try to work out what is happening and to solve this mystery. I really enjoyed this book as I said when I was little. I think it partly inspired me to get an internship in a museum when I first went to London when I was 18 and yeah it's just a really charming story and a lovely one set in Scotland. Now a very famous Scottish story for children is Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. I loved this book when I was little, Between Treasure Island and Kidnapped, this was definitely my favourite. And I'd like to read it again, I might get it on Audible soon, I think that would be quite a fun listen. But it's about a young boy who is shipwrecked off the coast of Scotland and he is trying to make it home, journeying across Scotland when he witnesses a murder and he is wrongfully accused of this crime and is trying to flee and a Highlander ends up helping him but it's all very exciting very action-packed and definitely a fun read both for adults and for children then I remembered I really liked this book when I was little and again I'd like to return to it because I don't remember it very well but it's called An Edinburgh Reel by Eona McGregor and it's set in the 1750s and it's about a young girl and her father. Her father is a very strident Jacobite and the daughter <laughs> just worries more about taking care of her father and their day-to-day -day life but I just remember it was a very exciting again quite action-packed story and I really enjoyed it so one I would definitely like to return to and then this is another one I really want to read I don't know if you've read the book codename Verity by Elizabeth Wine but I absolutely adored that book I read it quite a few years ago now and I've read others of hers in that series and this is the most recent that came out quite recently called The Enigma Game and it's about a young girl whose family moved to the UK from Jamaica her mother died and she's working in Scotland um, during World War Two and it sounds like another really exciting story it says a German defector lands at the airfield so she's working at an airfield carrying a press a precious package and Louisa Jamie and Ellen find themselves hiding a code breaking machine that could alter the course of the war but there are powerful people hunting for the machine and soon Louisa and her friends are playing a deadly game that threatens everything they hold dear. I'm really looking forward to reading this. Like I said, I adored Codename Verity. I loved Rose Under Fire too and lots of Elizabeth Vine's books. So really looking forward to this one. And then another favourite from my childhood, Highland Holiday by... Uh, Jane Shaw and this one I think again is about German spies <laughs> that these young girls um, come across on their holiday in the Highlands and I remember it as just quite a fun read I loved her sort of holiday book she wrote what did she write Breton Holiday and Bernese Holiday that's right I loved books even when I was really quite little about traveling and holidaying in different locations and the young protagonist having adventures and solving mysteries along the way and this is just a sort of book that really fit that category of story so I remember really enjoying it when I was little. Now for some poetry and non-fiction reads of course as it's Burns night I can't not mention Robert Burns and his poetry um, this is selected by Don Patterson. It's a Faber edition. I really love the cover. I shared one of my favourite Robert Burns poems on Tea Reads on Friday, which is A Red Red Rose. I think that's such a beautiful poem, but this is a lovely collection of his work. And then I've already said how much I love Alexander McCall Smith and this A Personal Anthology of Scottish Poems. It's really lovely. I so enjoy his selections of Scottish poetry. There's a real mix um, in here, both older poems and newer poems, and I just really enjoy this one. 
And then this one is also lovely, A Year of Scottish Poems, um, chosen by Gabby Morgan and with a for forward by Jackie Kay. And this takes you through every day of the year, which I think is really lovely. I love poetry books that have a poem for each day of the year and it's really nice to have one that celebrates Scottish poetry. So this is a favourite of mine. And then some nature writing and more non-fiction. I really love the writer John Lister Kay and this book, Gods of the Morning, A Bird's Eye View of a Highland Year, is really lovely. As you know, I'm really getting into my own small scale, very small scale and amateur bird watching here in Yorkshire, literally just from our kitchen window. Um, but I love uh, John Lister Kay's writing and his writing about birds and about the highlands is just really beautiful. So this is a lovely book. And then a real classic of Scottish nature writing is The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd. And this is about the, what mountains? Oh yeah, the Cairngorm Mountains in Scotland. And she describes her journeys into these mountains and what she sees there, what she experiences in the mountain. And it's just really beautiful. Nan Shepherd's writing is really, there's, I don't know, there's a real sort of grace and elegance to her writing that I really enjoy. So that one's a real classic. And then this one was recently sent to me by the author. I haven't read it yet, but it's on my list to read. And it's The Clearing, a memoir of art, family and mental health by Samantha Clark. And it's about Samantha Clark's return to Glasgow to clear out her parents' former home. And in that process of clearing out, she deals with a lot of emotions that come up and memories from her childhood. Her mother really suffered from mental illness and her father kind of withdrew a bit from that and withdrew from the world, I think, a little bit. Samantha Clark is herself an artist, so that's where a lot of reflection on art and the work of and, and the work of other female artists come into this as well. And the relationship between art and mental health is I think something that is discussed in this. Like I said, I haven't read it yet, but I'm looking forward to getting to it because I think it all sounds um, really interesting. And then this is a book that my mum really enjoyed. Well, she enjoyed the whole, I think it's a quartet. Um, I can't remember, I think there are four titles in this series. This is the first, it's The Hills is Lonely by Lillian Beckwith. And it's set in the Hebrides, it's about Lillian Beckwith, I think she put in an advertisement for um, a sort of solitary cottage because she really was in need of a bit of a rest cure and she wanted solitude and quiet and a chance to just be by herself. Well, she in fact didn't get that at all <laughs> when she moved to this Hebridean Croft and this is all about the people she met and the life that she had there. Um, and it's quite a charming read and you know, the beautiful natural landscape really plays a part with the sea right on her doorstep. And um, yeah, I haven't read all of the books um, in this series actually and I would like to but I th they're quite old now I don't know if they're still in print I think this was published in the 1960s so I'll have to check if they're still available but I think they would be well worth seeking out as well even if you have to look for secondhand copies and then I really enjoyed this book, The Art of Koori, How to Live Happy the Scottish Way by Gabriella Bennett. And Koori apparently is almost the sort of Scottish equivalent of Hooger and that idea of sort of cosy living. And in this book, Gabriella Bennett explores the art of Koori, what Koori really means, and 
how to live in a more curry way in Scotland. But what I really like it too is there's so much about modern Scottish artisans um, that is really interesting and gardens and sort of bookshops and general places to visit in Scotland. And she has sort of like how to curry in the city and how to curry in the country. And it's just really for anyone who loves Scotland or dreams about visiting Scotland, then this is a beautiful book to look at. I interviewed Gabriella about this book too, so I'll pop the link to that in the description box if you want to check out that interview. And then I adore the artist Winifred Nicholson, and this is her book that celebrates a lot of the Scottish artwork that she did because Winifred Nicholson did a lot of working trips to Scotland to paint, I think especially to the west coast, is that right? The west coast of Scotland? Um, yes. Yeah, particularly the West Coast. And this is just a really beautiful little collection of her Scottish paintings. And there are some extracts from her letters about her trips to Scotland. Um, and it's just a really beautiful book. Makes me want to visit Scotland even more. And then I love this book called Aran, Recipes and Stories from a Bakery in the Heart of Scotland by Flora Shedden. I think Flora Shedden, I can't remember if she won one year of Great British Bake Off or she was a finalist, I can't remember. But she's had two or three cookbooks out since then and this is the latest I believe. And she runs her own bakery now in Scotland too. And these are recipes really from that bakery. And it's really charming. I enjoy sort of hearing stories about the bakery and a bit about Flora's life. And those are the recipes are really good too. There's a really good um, apple pie recipe in this one that I really recommend. But it's just a really nice cookbook so one I enjoy a lot and then I've spoken before about Lodestars anthologies. Lodestars is a, is a kind of travel magazine but it's not your typical magazine. Each issue is centered ar around one particular area so They've done England, Scotland, I think the latest one coming out is Wales. They've done France and Japan and Mexico and so many places around the world by now. I can't remember how many issues there are now, but I think at least 12 or something, I'm not sure. This is one of the early ones and it's their Scotland one. And there are just some really interesting articles in here about Scotland, places to visit, and there's really beautiful photography as well. So again, it's just quite inspiring to look through this and to think of places you might want to visit and just to also enjoy as a celebration of Scotland and all things Scottish as well. So there are just some really nice stories essentially about Scotland in this issue. So that's something I like to look at. And then finally, I just published my review of this book, The Secret Life of Tartan, on my blog, Miranda'sNotebook.com, um, just today, in fact. And this I found absolutely fascinating. It's by Vixie Ray, and it's all about the history of Tartan, that very famous Scottish cloth. And she really has to try to uh, separate fact from fiction and myth in trying to investigate the history of Tartan, which I found so interesting. There are so many stories and myths that have cropped up about Tartan, but things that I had no idea of. For one thing, that it was actually an Englishman who designed the shape of what we now know of as a kilt, which I find really interesting. Um, but Tartan itself is such a fascinating history within sort of rebel uh, rebel culture and punk rock, as well as Scottish clans and ancestry and 
top fashion designers like Alexander McQueen and oh so of course it features on things like the shortbread biscuit tin and you know it crops up in so many unexpected places in some ways but there's so much fascinating history to it and yeah I really enjoyed this book so I found it a fascinating read but I'll pop my review of it in the description box too if you want to find out a bit more but anyway I hope you enjoyed my selection of some Scottish books uh, do give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it I hope you are all having a lovely evening and a good start to the week for everyone I'll see you again very soon with another video and thank you so much for watching remember you can always subscribe to my channel by clicking on my face that pops up on the screen but i'll see you again very soon goodbye